are sexually compatible. Oh, thank <laughs> the stars. Love is around us. The elements. What's up, y'all? What's up? Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Hey, Phoebe, I want to start with you first because <laughs> okay. I really, first of all, just to be completely transparent, you know, as a black male, I just know that like it was not always accepted or condoned or it wasn't a lot of support to go through therapy. Now that I do and hearing that you did, I was just connecting where your vision was at this entire time. And then it starts to bring another challenge, the challenge of like, how some folks between re religion and science, but for you it was more like astrology versus therapy. And I just continue to hear you sort of mirror and echo your therapist. I, I, I can see it in a lot of the different interview parts of it. At what point in this season, or would you say in this journey, did you just begin to want to buy in? Because you seemed a little reserved. And it's not to say that that's not the right way to go, but you know, you, 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 you did a, a level of rehabilitation to get to this point. And now that you have those tools and, 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 and understand that and you're going forward, then you're being preached something else. So like, when did it start to click for you all together? Yeah, I think they're kind of, you know, maybe I got to a point where it was like, I'm still in my own way. Um, and, you know, from, from going to therapy and being such a huge ad for, advocate for self growth and personal development, and wanting to get to know deeper versions of myself, then learning all these other aspects about my astrological chart, about, you know, I'm a Leo, but I have so much water sign in my chart. So it's like, I'm actually super emotional and I'm allowed to be vulnerable. And that doesn't necessarily mean I have to set aside, you know, my drive and my, you know, fierceness and ferocity and all this stuff. Like I can have both things. Um, and then when I, I think there, you know, there was a point in the show, you'll obviously have to watch to find out all the juicy deets, but, um, I really wanted to, to, to dive all in and stop letting my, my fear of being completely open to this process, get in my own way. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know what moment you're talking about. And that's part of my next question. The moment when, um, you all had to put things into the time capsule, I thought was the most beautiful moment in this entire series. Um, I, I want to give a, I want to give a, another opportunity to, to kind of reflect on that because you spoke about family, you, you spoke about, you know, the things that you left to be in those moments. Now that the season's all gone, how has it how have you all kind of metabolized everything and being back to those things that you had left in love? Mm, I think for me, I have a complete different approach to everything in my life when it comes to my family and it comes to you know, my brothers and the people that supported me through this entire journey, like not having them for that amount of time, I know it sounds like a little bit, it meant so much to me. And now it's like any chance I can, I wanna see my mom, I wanna see my grandma, <laughs> I wanna spend time with my sister, I wanna do trips, you know, that's so important to me because I didn't have them during that time. And that was a very vulnerable time and it was a very important time in my life and it meant a lot to me. So I just appreciate things completely differently now. It just, everything is a lot to me. Even just a dinner is like, I need to make time. It's yeah. not no later anymore, it's now. Yeah, I, I think like going into this experience, like we, we all had to completely strip away our normal sources of support. We, we didn't have our cell phones to call our families and or to call our best friends and get advice. Like we sacrificed a lot to be put in this very vulnerable, high, um, you know, high emotions state 24 seven um, and we're willing to do that. But like obviously post show, it's like, well, I'm not taking that for granted ever again. Like obviously you learn to rely on yourself and like I think we've all learned to really rely on astrology as well and have that understanding now. Um, but yeah, it's just like we sacrificed so much. So now it's like, oh, I don't ever want to take that for granted. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like the capsule ceremony, I, I personally feel like I didn't delve deep enough into that sense. And I remember um, a few of the more emotional and more deep connections and things that people shared, like Maria's. Um, Maria's share was a lot more in depth, and I kind of regret kind of being surface level in that sense because I think I shared, I can't say what I shared, but I shared something that wasn't as deep as I wanted to. Um, and I kind of wish I had more. And classic air sign just staying at the surface and in the clouds and not going more in depth. But um, I was really proud of the rest of these three for kind of sharing more personal moments with, of their life with me, so. Yeah, what about you, Noah? Um, 
I honestly don't remember what I even said. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But, Do you remember what you put in the capsule? Uh, most likely generational wealth, but something else had to be besides that in there. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. What? There's like a picture of your mom and your brother. Yeah. Oh, you talk about that capsule. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. of the fire. It was okay. a fire, but we put something in the capsule. Oh, okay. Yeah, pictures and stuff. Oh, the pictures. Oh, of course. Um, well, my family always has been everything. Like, I helped raise my little brothers. Like, I grew up really, really fast being a young black man. First of all, the world looks at you completely differently. And growing up being six feet tall, like in the sixth grade, I'm taller than all my teachers. So everyone looks at me like an adult. So walking through the streets, my mom is like, hey, come me to such and such because you're a man, even though I'm only like 12 or 13. And I felt like I was really didn't have a chance to truly be a child because um, of the way the world looked at me and the yeah. responsibility I had at home as well. So my family has always been everything to me. So that's why growing up, I always wanted to, like a role model. So I wanted, to, as growing up, I wanted to be that role model that I didn't have as a kid and have yeah. those traits for that young black man. Be like, okay, he's successful. He's um, he's successful. He's smart. He has his life together. He doesn't have to do all the illegal things to get ahead in the world. Like yeah. he did the right thing to get there and be able to support and help the younger kids. Be like, hey, if you want to be great, if you want to do this, you can do it. And I want to be able to tell them how. And by yeah. tip by actually doing it myself and have that experience and have that blueprint printed out for them. So wow, wow. my family's like huge and just community and everything else is very big to me. Powerful, powerful. Now, the four of you all, it was no question. You you understood you understood the mission. You understood the job and the task at hand. We understood the assignment. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but did were you all ever aware that the singles didn't? when they started to throw that wild card in into doing their own thing in their house, when it's like, the whole goal is to find our matches. But then you were hearing like whispers of like, oh, they're kind of dating, they're kind of dating. Did that kind of throw things off for you? And were you all aware that they did not understand the mission? And I, I, I want to start with the phones. Like we, we started finding out as it went by. It's too small. You know, it was like, oh, shit, this person yeah. doesn't understand the assignment. Okay, it kind of lets you know, like, their true colors and mm -hmm. where they're at. And it kind of makes it easier for us, to be yeah. honest, because it lets you know where someone's heads is at. Um, but I don't think it's something that we felt like we understood the assignment and they didn't. It was just kind of like coming out day by day. Yeah. Like, okay, you're like that. Mm -hmm. All right, got you. And also, like, <laughs> actions always speak louder than words. Oh, yeah. And like, we could see who was talking a mad game and who was actually- About it. About it, yeah. yeah. So it was like, all right, you're gonna reveal yourself. And not only I'm gonna see that, but like, there's cameras everywhere, <laughs> dumbass. Like, you don't know, think that's not gonna come out? We know, we you're not being to... sly, you know? <laughs> we're not living across town. We're not living in different cities. Yeah, it's you a live big across, mansion, yeah. but it's small. You live me. across the hall, man. Like, I'm gonna hear what's going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see into your bunk bed, sir. Um, Connor, I'm not. What's that say? Just kidding. Sorry. Connor, now that you've, uh, you know, and it's only going to get wilder from this point, but now you're going to have to kind of show face in these big cities more often. Has that been uncomfortable for you? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I had Noel kind of pick out my outfit for today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I showed up. I showed up in a tank top and gym shorts, and I was like, "I'm ready for tomorrow." And he's like, "Bro, you're not wearing that. You can't wear that." And I was like, "What do you mean? Like, this is what I'm comfortable." With. He's like, "You're not showing up like that next to me." Next. So. Make us next all to us. Yeah. No, I'm slowly but surely being pulled out from underneath my rock, and it's. I got some. Uh, some good guys and some help we from these fashionistas over here who know what's going on, and we'll it's. Never uh, astray. Yeah. Well, it's. Yeah, it's definitely been a transition, kind of <laughs> being around a lot more people than I'm used to. <laughs> God, I'm glad to hear. You know, I was a little bit worried because with you all being so laser focused about what the task was and what the singles doing, whatever they wanted to do, I was like, I wonder when you all start looking across the room at each other. But I'm happy that we actually got some camaraderie, some brother and sisterhood going on here and that everyone's smiling in good spirits. And I think that, you know, for all the um, emotions and uh, experiences and, and stories and testimonies that you shared during the season. It's good to be able to talk to the four of you all and seeing everybody doing really happy because it was a wild one. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> You're telling us. You're telling us. <laughs> But nonetheless, also, too, one other thing, I know I got to wrap, but one other thing, too, I'm also glad that you all did not, was not like spiteful in like joining up in eliminations. When you started seeing singles started doing things behind your back, could have easily diffused it by saying, hey, you heard blah, 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 talking to blah, blah, blah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna eliminate that person we so that, that person that. can't. Who said we did it? <laughs> 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 oh, no. Oh. Tune in to find out. You are not <laughs> there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, I, folks, I, I had a good time this season. I cannot wait to see what the world has to say with it. I hope you're having an amazing time today. So it was a pleasure Thank to talk you. to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. Much love. Y'all be good. Be good. Big Bell.